Welcome to another episode of Tacos and Shawarma. My name's Elle. I host the show, and we're here with our special guest, Moxie Araya. Mm-hmm. She's from New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. New and, Jersey. And then she's, she, she moved to New York. When I was 13. Yeah, that's dope. Um, mm-hmm. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I love your vibe already. So. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's a New York thing. They could exactly. You could feel it, right? How long have you been out here? Um, Like... 10 years 10 years Mm -hmm. so it's been a while wow but did you get here i i signed to capitol records when i was younger and so i moved out here then and then i was kind of like back and forth for a while but um now i'm just here permanently oh that's dope Mm -hmm. do you love it Mm -hmm. i really i love both places like i think that it's been nice to have my family in new york still so i can like always go home Mm -hmm. um but when i'm here i'm just like kind of Focused. So you've been in music for 10 years? Longer. I've been singing since I could talk. Really? And I went to performing arts school. That's why I moved to New York when I was 13, to mm. go to performing arts school. Oh, so you're just like a professional. So I'm just, actually, my my school was called Professional Children's School. That was my high school. Oh, see, I was, <laughs> I was on the money. It was just, you know, performing arts school, so... I saw you open for Justin Bieber. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, So my manager at the time was Scooter Braun. Really? Uh Uh-huh. And what happened? (laughs) I saw everyone's, like, firing him. What happened? Um, We just kind of grew apart. Um, I really, really wanted creative control. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to tell you how to do it? um, I wouldn't say that. I just think that he had a vision and, like, we just didn't, like, ever really see it the same way. And it was all good energy and stuff, though. Um, he, like, changed my life by putting me on that Justin How Bieber tour. Um, through another manager that I had and friend. Um, so, so yeah. So then I opened for Bieber and Post Malone. That's awesome. Him. Yeah. So I'm, like, really That's amazing. Grateful I saw that. Drake follows you. Yes. I'm like, she must be someone because Drake follows her. <laughs> How did you meet Drake? So I last year was in the Wait For You video with Future and Drake. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you've seen the video. It's like Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So I was the queen and Future was the king. And Drake was like his best friend. Did you sing on it or they just used you for your image? I, I was just like the queen in the video. You look like a queen. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Some days. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's dope. So uh-huh. from there... So from there we became friends and then we friends work together and you're yeah. friends. Yeah. Or you're like LA friends. Um, no, I think I think we're friends. Like you have his number? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's that's been a good friend. A good friend? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he, he What's knows. a good friend? Um, I think somebody who is like he knows what I'm doing, music. He's obviously very good at that. So it's like I can call him for advice. And supportive? Him, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he'll answer your call? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to get there. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you just yeah. released a single. I was at her single release party. Mm-hmm. I, I stumbled on a bunch of young um you People. are young. No. Yes. <laughs> I try to fit in, but I was like, there's a lot going on over here. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to come meet you at the bar. Yeah. And then we talked for like five She's minutes. like, you don't even drink. I'm like, um, not really. Neither do I, though. I don't drink at all. I rarely do. Yeah. I mean, not that I'm like a, I'm not one of those people who like has a drinking problem and that's why I don't, I just mm-hmm. can't, I don't like the, the taste of it. Oh. I don't like the way it makes me feel. Mm. Like it doesn't, mm. I don't. Because I'm not, like, this fun, like, person. Mm-hmm. What's your sign? I'm a Sag. Sages are, like, usually the life of the party. No, I'm fun in a different way. Yeah, I see. I'm, like, funny. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, like, woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, get let's get fucked up! No, yeah, I mean, I, me neither. Yeah, maybe, not, hold on, let me make sure these fucking lashes didn't come off. I, I got these glamnetic fucking, I hate them. No, they just, they're, like, perfect. They're good? Okay. Yeah. I have this lash, these lash Koreans in Koreatown that uh-huh. they do my lashes really good, and it's only $100. <clears throat> and they do a really good job, but now <clears throat> she, like, disappeared, and she, like, sh- they said she's in the hospital. So I had to oh, go shoot. and, like... Get other lashes. Get fake magnetic lashes, which yeah. I, I don't like those. But yeah, so I had to make sure. Um, oh, they look good. Thanks. Yeah. I did the glue ones. You do? I can't. I don't know how to put them on. I'm not like a girly girl. Like, I try, you know? I but- was a 
competitive dancer when I was young. Oh, I seen like two. I read it. So I had to do my lashes since like four years old. You're kidding. You're a professional. You should have seen how she was posing for pictures. I was like, oh my God. Really? Let me run out of here. This is like Kylie Jenner fucking uh, all those models like that know how to, you know, like that was crazy. Like, you know what it reminded me of? Like a cobra? Like, you know those snakes that they like stand? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Damn, get me out of Shoulders here. Shoulders back. Yeah, you look good though. It was really good. I was just, I was like, damn, she really knows what she's doing. I just have been traumatized by so many bad photos. I'm still traumatized. Like every time I see myself. Every time I see myself on Google Images, I'm like, wow. You look good though. On Google I like, Images? I don't know. I didn't go on no, Google don't. Images. I went on your Instagram. My Instagram was curated by me. I know. You want to <laughs> so, hear something funny? So I like my Instagram. You want to hear something funny? Yeah. <laughs> my editor uh-huh. is autistic. Uh-huh. Is autistic, and he's been running my YouTube page, mm-hmm. and he's been titling my shorts mm-hmm. like "36-year-old single mom says." But he's been calling. He's been calling, and I don't. I'm not a computer person, so I haven't noticed till like two days ago. I'm like. Looking through my shit, I'm like, is this guy fucking crazy? But it works? No. <laughs> but yeah, it's really important to like oversee yeah. what's being put out there. Yeah, very. It's exhausting to be honest. But when yeah. did you start doing this to your hair? Bleaching it? Yeah. Because um, that like... 2019. Are you blonde? No. My hair color is like... S- so it's s- the brown in your hair. It's not killing your hair? It's absolutely killing my hair. Because I, I have used extensions to bleach my in. hair. I used to bleach my hair and I used to kill I have my a hair. mullet. A mullet? Full blown. I like it. I, it doesn't look like a mullet. Well, it's slicked back. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> like, it's short. Oh. Like, you're saying, like, your real hair is a mullet? My real hair is a mullet. And okay. I have, like, um, extensions that stay in permanent, permanently. Okay. For now. Okay, this is a hard. This is hard work right here. This yeah. is like a lot I mean, of I get, maintenance. I get. No, those extensions go in like every four months. How do you wash your hair? I wash them. Like you can wash them. They're just beads. They're like one at a, one strand at a time. Mm. I like your earring too. It's Thank cool. you. I like your style. You have good style. You could tell Thank she you. comes from New York because in LA they don't really have style like that. I had to like put things together. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could just imagine, like, being an artist is, like, a lot of work. Especially when I only had 10 minutes to get ready this morning. <laughs> yeah, you look good, though. You're still in your 20s, so it's okay. <laughs> um, What is your song about? Um, Reason is about a breakup. Did you just go through a breakup? It was, like, a year and a half ago. It's still new. At this point, yeah. Yeah. What happened? Um... At the end of the day, like, we just were not that compatible. And I think both of us were trying to make each other different people because we were, like, attached and we had this love for each other. But we just, like, weren't who we both wanted. That happens a lot. He wanted me to, like, be way less affectionate and, like... Less affectionate? Was he gay? No, no, not at all. I saw a lot of gays at your party. I'm like, oh, my God. I hope she doesn't, like, sift through all my fucking videos. You want to hear something funny? Before I'm like, I'm going to make sure she signs the paper before I post my next video. Because I was wearing a Trump hat. Okay. And I was like, I don't know if she's, like, anti, um, like, if she might think that's a little outrageous. Um, I don't really ever like get into politics because i I feel like it's all like a show to me it is so it's like i like usually views on like both sides yeah and i just feel like they make this like line to separate people but when you really listen to it it's like what is so different about each or like they hype up certain things on either side to make it like extreme but i just yeah. don't think it's that extreme yeah i'm not really that political i just yeah. like being on the trump train because it's just funny i mean the the um so was, shot was funny the yeah. other day i was like i'm not gonna post it until she gets here <laughs> and she has she can't back out um <laughs> but yeah so mm-hmm. he didn't want you to be that affectionate he he didn't want me to need so much affection he, was not, affection he was not he was not a giving need? a giving person of affection like he didn't Affection didn't come natural Do to him. Do you feel like you were just with him because of the way he looked? No. So what attracted you to him? His his mind. His mind? A hundred percent. That's And his demeanor. So he had this like kind of like 
I don't know, just a very kind, gentle, like, demeanor. And he's very focused and very hardworking. And I loved, like, his brain and I loved talking to him. So she still loves him. She's just I have love for him. Yeah. But we haven't, we're, no, like, it's totally in the past. I've been, like, in How love with somebody you? else since. Oh, you so, have been? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, that's over. But but well, I have love for him. Yeah. How do you meet guys? I mean, how can a guy even approach you? You know Drake and you have his phone number. <laughs> like, how does a guy even try to, like, talk to you? Or do you, are you the pursuer? You don't seem like the pursuer, are you? I can be. You can be? Yeah. Especially the past two years, I became completely... I have, like, no shame about expressing myself. Like I'll be like, I really like you. Like, I'm kind of in love with you. And I don't really care if you say it back to me or you love me. I'm just going to tell you, like. But I'm saying, like, the first move, who's making it? It depends. A lot of the times, like, I'll I'll make, if I like a guy, I'll make him comfortable enough to make the first move. Like, I'll be like, hey. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. smile enough. And then he'll be like, oh, okay. She's I think, but maybe warming guy, up. They have to be, like, comfortable within their skin, though. Yeah. What kind of guys are you attracted to? I'm really attracted to guys that are very driven. Um, so a lot of guys that are like that are actually very confident, you know? Yeah. Where do but you find these guys? I meet guys like when I go out in the studio, on Instagram, through work. Honestly, all I do is work. But not like rappers, right? I mean. You don't want to date them, do you? <laughs> I mean. Oh, I they're horrible. <laughs> you have? Sure. But they aren't aren't they horrible? Um, I haven't had horrible experiences. Well, you haven't had great experiences because you're single. <laughs> <laughs> but what if I want to be single? No, you don't. I swear to God, I do. Because you do, because they were horrible experiences before, right? Well, I do. Not horrible. Let's just I not like use the having word my own. I'm. I'm. I'm different. I really like having my own flow. Like, I don't like somebody in my house. I don't like someone in my house. Have you ever had someone try to stay in your house and not leave? Yeah. Yes. We need yeah. to talk. Can we talk about this? Sure. Okay, because people don't <laughs> believe me when I tell them that's happened to me. <laughs> I, I like, don't like feeling, like, used like that almost. Like, why are you here? How did you get here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are you still here? I really like my own quiet, personal time. I like to do my skincare routine and put on things on my face that taste really bad. So I don't want someone kissing me before I go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I like my routine and my space because I've been, like, single for so long. And then I just like to, like, I'm just not ready to settle down. So it's like I'm still meeting people. So are you, you know? saying now you're dating for, like, more marriage? Um, I think I'm dating to feel that, like, this really elevates my life. Mm -hmm. Like, because just dating for, like, love, it's, like, cool. But it kind of feels like a distraction sometimes for me. So it's just, like, does this person, like... Do we really bring value to each other's lives, like challenge each other, make each other better, build each other? Like I'm looking for that feeling where it's like something bigger, like the two of us come together and it's just something bigger. Who's who's watching out for you? Watching out for me? Yeah, like you're a, you're 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 successful female, you're yeah. pretty. Yeah. You're out in LA with all the fucking monsters. Mm -hmm. Who's like the person that is like if there is a guy at your in your couch mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to leave, who do you call? Um, not that there is. I'm just saying. Yeah, if there was like if you were like I have I have guy friends that are like really there for me. I really do. But so, they all are in love with you. Secretly? No, maybe. Yeah, but they're just, also in love with like four other people too. I would never do that. I would never know they were in love with me if like I know that they're in love with other people too. They've dated other people and you know. So it's like I have I have guy friends that I could call on for sure. Um, I also am like very, um, I'm a very big God person. You are? And so I am alone a lot and I have been on this journey like very much alone. And the only thing that makes me feel like comfort is my relationship to God. Usually the demons talk about God, how they have a relationship. All the, all the yeah. like, not you, but yeah. like every guy that I've met that's like all this godly shit, uh -huh. they're usually a fucking demon. I had like a near death experience. You have? And how? What happened? It was like two and a half years ago with COVID. 
and I was in the hospital. You got COVID? Really, really bad. And my lungs were so inflamed. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't lift my arm. I couldn't walk from the bed to the bathroom. Um, I could barely walk for three months. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was like just in a really dark place and like depressed place. And I really was suicidal, like really wanted to die, like would just really, truly believed everything would be better for everybody. I just believed everything would be better for everybody in my life if I died. I really, truly believed that. Like my first thought when I woke up every morning was you should just die. Like it will be easier for everybody. And it was really heavy. And the only thing that got me out of that was like praying, praying, literally praying. Like I remember talking to my mentor and he's like, and I'm like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to get it. And he's like, you have to pray. And I was like, what? Like, I'm talking about like, tell me the mental steps to get out of it. And he's like, no, you just have to pray. Mm -hmm. And so I just started and I would like get in my shower and like pray on my knees for like three times a day. Like seriously pray. And I became like so regimented about it. And like for real, like everything just like every darkness just like fell off. That's good. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm just like, I'm just. You're one with God? All day. That's good. This is the only thing. try to get there. Sometimes I like, you know, lose it for a minute. But whenever I do, I just feel so chaotic and I just want to. Pray. Yeah. That's good. (laughs) It's a good outlet. Yeah. I mean, it's better than like I felt you like I could never cold. rely on some on somebody to be that protector. So I it's like now just an energy. That's good. Mm-hmm. Do you have siblings? I do. How many? Um I have two brothers and a sister. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's a big family. My big sister is really like my Are you protector. the youngest? No, I'm in the middle. Oh. Yeah. The middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you? I'm the oldest. I have a one sister. She's like ten years younger than me. Mm. Mm. Different fathers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have different moms. Really? Mm-hmm. All of them? No, um, half and half. Mm. Two with one mom, two with another. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. What do I want to ask you? Mm-hmm. What do you think of like men saying they don't want women who have like more than five partners? Like, have you, do you ever watch podcasts? Yeah, they yeah. They, like, ask women their body count. Like which Andrew I think, Tate and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about him in particular. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, I just, I, like, a lot of podcasts talk to, like, women, and they mm-hmm. try to, like, kind of down them and say, like, oh, if you have a I have a theory body. about that. Tell me. I think that women become very powerful when they date men and are sexually free, and I think that power is so scary to men. Um, that they kind of want to keep women in the house. And I think queens would have, you know the stories, like queens would have suitors line up in front of their thrones and have whatever men that they wanted. And I'm not saying that that's like, you just just sleep with everyone, absolutely not. But I just think that men that say that don't even know that they were indoctrinated to believe that. Because they are afraid of women who really, really feel secure in their sexuality. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's my view on it. Okay, that's a good. <laughs> that's a good view. I like it. Yeah, it's a good view. But it's so, not yeah. real. It's not even a realistic thing that they're asking of people to to be. One hundred percent. Um, I always I've talked to my mom about that. I'm like, well, I would have stayed with the last one if he stayed with me. I, like I tried. Yeah. But now I have to meet someone new. So hard. But like, it's not like I wanted to. I would have spent the rest of my life with him. The guy you made a song about? I would have spent the rest of my life with him. All right. So I just said you're still in love with that guy. I'm not, but I wouldn't anymore. (laughs) She's a catch. She said she'll stay home. And she'll pray. And she'll pray. And she'll. Do you know how to cook? Yeah, I'm Italian. Oh, right. Sicilian. (gasps) You're Sicilian. So she can. My dad has restaurants. My sister has a restaurant. Oh, my God. We're a cooking family. We could eat. So, what did you you do to him? I did it. I wanted something different. Like, I loved him, but I wanted within my relationship a different feeling. Like, what? Deeper emotional connection. I like guys who are a little bit deeper emotionally. Like, they want to connect deeper. Yeah, so I feel like the successful men, they can't connect. It, you're, it's it's true. It's yeah. it's harder for them to, like... Can, can I tell you why? I think. I, I'm not a 
successful man. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like, like now that I'm in my 30s, right? Like it's, it would probably be like impossible for me to like fall in love with somebody just because like when I was younger, I used to fall fall in love so mm -hmm. hard and whatever mm -hmm. and I've gotten like hurt so yeah. I don't even think I would allow someone to like have that power over me mm -hmm. and I feel like with men when they get heartbroken like more like one or two times mm -hmm. after that they're just like I'm never gonna let another girl do this to me for sure and they don't like, even like allow like one time like at 15 yeah like I got time. my heart broken at 15 yeah one and time I, that's, love is stupid yeah oh for real one time yeah whereas like we'll go through it like 10 and be like you know what he's still out there <laughs> Let me brush myself off and keep going. Yeah, some women. <laughs> yeah. I'm like traumatized. I'm done. That's why I'm single. That might be why I like being single right now. Because I just don't want the distraction. Like the love is cool. But like the attachment, I'm not about it. Do you it. want kids? Yeah. One day? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm not ready yet, but I do. Just wait till you're married, though. Don't ever have kids out of wedlock. This I is my, it, I my might, advice to I you. I might have a kid with, no. like, a friend. Oh, okay. You know? I don't know if I'm going to be able to get married. Okay. With a friend. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Like a gay friend? An ultra friend. What's an ultra friend? A friend that you've known a really long time. Is he and gay? And maybe you guys have slept together in the past. He's not gay. But you know that he's a really good person. Just, well, why don't you just be with him if you slept with him already because i he's might a good I, person because i don't need a partner ever maybe okay i'm weird like that so you don't need to have sex i can have sex with my boyfriend <laughs> oh you're gonna have a part um, a, a kid with a partner and have a boyfriend too i'm gonna have a kid with a friend and we're gonna co-parent and then i can date people <laughs> it's not gonna work why? Especially if only if he's gay, it'll work. Well, but here's the thing: he, we might have love for each other, but not be in love. Mm. Do you do you okay. think there's a difference between like love and in love? Yes. So we might have love for each other. Like, can I just tell the you? Thi something? The thing is, I like to know people a long time because I like to see how they act when they have money. I like to see how they act when they're broke. I like to see how they act when they're super mad or when they're super hurt or when they're going through things. So that way, I can know, like, okay, this person has a consistent personality and behavior that I can trust to raise a kid with. You don't think you should be with that person if they're reliable and they have this consistent behavior? But I, I don't want a relationship. You just said you're going to have a boyfriend. Yeah, but, like, like that's, but that's not long term. Like mm. in my head, it's not long term. So like I also date people that, I, that feel the same way as me usually. Like they also don't want a relationship, but they want connection and they're looking for like love. But it's not like so... Like in a box. Yeah. <laughs> you're okay. like, you, she's crazy. No, I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> How long do you think in love lasts? I don't know. I think that is something you have to like cultivate and work on when you're really committed to somebody. And I think that I haven't found that person, like I said, where it's like we both are on the same page of commitment. There is somebody like he's swirling in my in my world like that I, I feel this way for, but he's not ready. Oh, you know somebody? There is. There, there's a possible. Who's marinating? Yeah, there's possible, but I know that they're not ready for that either, so. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'll just tell you from my experience, mm -hmm. in love only lasts like two years. After two years, you're just like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And that's so depressing. So it's like. It is. So that's but why. But maybe this, you just become like great life partners. That's. Yeah, that's what I mean with the but ultra the attractions friend. don't last forever. I agree, which is so why it's every so depressing because be when yours. when the boyfriend stops being attracted, when the husband that I've committed my life to and you know, am willing to make sacrifices for and time sacrifices and maybe financial business because I'm not working the same amount or whatever, like that person that I'm making all these sacrifices for to be married to, which is a beautiful thing, one day they're going to wake up and maybe be like unattracted to me. But so I think that love is more like sustainable than attraction. For sure. So if they love you, they're yeah. still going to stay with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you're be not miserable. Gonna wanna I don't know if they're going to be miserable. I don't know. I don't know you personally, but I'm just saying <laughs> that. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, don't I think know. love is more important than attraction too. Like, I think there's like a Greek word. It's called agape. Okay. And it means love without conditions. So it's like what you. That's the love kind of love that you get married on. It's a decision. 
Yeah. I am making a decision no matter what happens under God in marriage to love this person for the rest of my life. It's a decision. So it doesn't matter if I'm not attracted to them that day or if I don't like them that day or if I'm mad at them. I made the decision that no matter any of those circumstances for the rest of my life, I'm going to love them. So you do want to get married. I could do that with the right person. Oh, my God. You have so much hope in these right people that they're not there. But that's okay. Maybe I'll just live off the the dream. For how long? Forever. You don't you're not gonna want that forever. I think also like the older you get, you might even be less less wanting a relationship. Yeah. Cause you're like you I know, already don't so much, so it's scary to think no, of less. Well, I I like love. Everybody likes love. So I'm saying like I could do it. Is it like top of my list needs to get done? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Kid though, yeah. So that's why I'm thinking logically. Okay, a friend that I really feel. But like what I happens know for a while. when this friend, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. that you really feel, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. he's good to be a dad. Mm-hmm. He meets a fucking girl. That's totally fine. And she's gonna be like, you think that you're gonna be around this beautiful, singing, gorgeous model chick as your your co? Like his, she's gonna be his, really insecure. His wife might be more gorgeous. So he'll have a kid with her. And but he'll already have one with me. But why? <laughs> but if but why would he want one? It, like, have guys said they they would do that with you? I have a few friends that we've talked about it. Okay, that's mm-hmm. interesting. How are you? How is the the baby going to be? I think I think I think both both like sexually conceived could be. Okay, there's love there. It's like we we'll make a decision to do this together. You know, this is interesting. <laughs> And this is interesting. I feel like I'm exposing all my crazy thoughts. No, it's good. But I think that, like I've said, like that kind of love means more to me than that. Sorry, I just have to no, make sure ahead. I don't have burgers in my mm-hmm. nose. No, you don't. Oh, fuck. I'm a hot mess. This is what happens when no, you pass not. a certain age. <laughs> you just become a hot mess and you don't even care anymore. <laughs> You just look at these young cobra-ish <laughs> gazelles out in the world. You're like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck this. I have no chance. You are gorgeous. I don't oh, know what you're talking that's about. So nice. That's what they you say are. to make you feel better when you're when you're older. I'm not older. You have not a wrinkle on your face. Thanks. So just you don't even have to like. I would think you were my age. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. It's an LA lie. You don't think I'm your age? I don't know. Your skin is like better than mine. Stop. Okay, so where do you, you you live near here? Yeah. Have you been in Burbank? Yeah. Well, no. Mm -mm. That can't be disclosed. Oh. Cut that out, please. (laughs) We'll cut it out. (laughs) Have you been living in the same place for a long time? Um, So you live in a building. Yeah. So do people see you and are like, oh my God, it's her. Um, Do they know you? Because you have a distinguished look and then they could just like go on Instagram and be like, you know who lives in my building? You know? I there's a few people in my building that I've recognized. So oh, really? yeah, maybe it's just like um an LA thing, as you say. Yeah, an LA <laughs> thing. Okay, what are your favorite restaurants out here since you're you've been mm. your family's in the restaurant industry? Mm-hmm. I like this restaurant. Top three. Giorgio Baldi. It's Italian. It's really good. I've heard of it. Is it on La Cienega? Um, There is one in Beverly Hills, but there's one in Santa Monica, mm. which is the one I usually go to. I like it there. Um, I'm I'm vegetarian. I, I'm basically vegan, but I've been vegetarian since I was three. Tell me about that. So How did that happen? My mom took me to a like petting zoo turkey farm one year as like a suburban New Jersey activity before uh-huh. Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. To like pet the animals. And she said that I just like had a panic attack. I didn't understand. And I was just like, what do you mean I'm going to eat this like goat that I'm petting or this turkey that I'm petting? And then she said like the next day was like Thanksgiving. And that's the first time you see like the full animal on the table. And I was three. And she just said I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. And never, ever give me something that was an animal. Because I didn't have I didn't have dolls. I only was like obsessed with stuffed animals. So mm-hmm. I think I had this connection to like animals. And Do you have any? I don't because of work. Mm-hmm. I just feel travel? like I can't. Yeah, I can't take care of something right now the way I'd want to. So, um, so yeah. So I haven't eaten meat since. That's crazy. That's mm-hmm. a young age. I had like a hot dog at twelve, and then like steak and fish a few times in 
like literally four times maybe. So you don't eat fish either? Uh -uh. Uh-uh. So what does your day look like? What is your like? I eat a lot of fruit, um, a lot of like grains, nuts, pasta. Pasta's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh (laughs) Honestly, like I don't really eat a lot of meat either. Mm -hmm. I'm not like a vegetarian, but you don't Mm -hmm. eat cheese? I eat cheese sometimes. I'm mostly vegan. This is why I brought it up because I love this restaurant, Sage. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I've heard vegan of it place. Too. It's vegan? Mm-hmm. So good. It is? Where is it? So good. There's three. There's one in Pasadena, That's Silver far. Lake, and then Culver City. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't been to any of those places. Mm-hmm. I don't leave my little like... Burbank area? No, I'm not from Burbank. Uh, I mean, I'm not from anywhere, but I live in Laurel Canyon. Oh, nice. Yeah, so Beautiful. I, don't, I don't leave Yeah, like the Studio City, West Hollywood. Like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. too far. Mm-hmm. Everything is so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're not looking for a guy. No. But you have a lot of guys interested. Or are they scared to tell you? Do you think guys are scared to approach you? I think guys maybe possibly feel my like like relationship unavailability because they don't really tell me they want to be in a relationship with me. It, we're just kind of like. But they ask you on dates? Sure. Do you go on them? Sometimes. But you know, like, guys, why they take you on dates? No, tell me why. I just feel like they want to sleep with you. Really? I don't know. See, I don't know the new age situation. And so that's just not appealing to me. Has a guy ever taken you on a date and asked you to pay? Um, Or expected you to pay? No. Never. Mm. That's good. I don't think I can remember that. That's good. Mm -hmm. There's guys that do that. Yeah, no. (laughs) Um. All right, so that's a new thing. So if they ask you on a date, they expect you to fuck them after. Not expect you to, but that's like kind of what they want, you know. And so that's just it. Kind of gets exhausting for to like think. I don't know. It's just like that's the energy I feel from guys, and so I just like I'm like, uh. if you're coming into my life and you're like talking to me and like, oh, what are you doing and what are you building and what are you da 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 and like, oh, I can help here and then I'm like, oh, I can help here and then we kind of like. It's like they're interested in my, like, well-being. Mm-hmm. That's way more interesting to me than, like, let me take you to dinner. Yeah. Because like, you, you you can cook. I can eat my own food. I can take myself to and dinner. And you probably can't even eat half the shit on the menu where yeah. they would take you anyway. <laughs> like, I need, I, I like a guy to come into my life and, like, really bring value. And I hope that I can, like, do the same for him, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's more so, like. Do you like East Coast guys? Yeah. More than West Coast guys, right? Um, or it doesn't matter. There's just like there's a like vibe. a there's like a East Coast in my heart vibe. So when I find out someone's from the East Coast, it's like ah, uh, you know, God. you know, thank God you're normal. Maybe it's just like a like a, a root thing. Okay. So yeah, so like that's definitely a deeper connection. Oh, you're from New York. Oh, you're from the East Coast. Like for sure. Mm-hmm. I feel that mm-hmm. that's how I feel about everyone I meet from New York I'm like mm-hmm. what part of New York, New York are you from when they tell me like Buffalo I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I have a really good girlfriend from Buffalo you do yeah. <laughs> I'm just like that's not really New York <laughs> they get so mad at me I say it uh-huh. in such a snobby way too like I'm like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I don't know yeah do you have a lot of female friends out here yeah I you, do how do you I meet do. them through the industry um through friends like through my female friends, and I meet more female friends. I'm a very like girly girl, s- supporting girls, girl. So That's good. so I like really like to like work with. But how do girls. you trust these girls? Mm, I don't know. Maybe like, maybe like there's like intuition on who I trust and who I don't. But still, it's like, how do you trust anybody? That's true. So like that's why I mean I'm just with God and like feel protected and I just if I just give good energy and give good vibes and support people, then I hope that that comes back to me. You know, that's good. I also like don't like like talking like I don't talk shit about girls like ever. Really, I hate that. I hate that. I used to do that when I was You're younger. Not a mean girl. No, that's good. I like just completely like take that. And if girls are like doing it, I just don't participate. Like talking shit about other girls. Yeah, I just don't like gossip or like talking shit about people in general. Like, yeah, unless this has to do with men. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah, they deserve it, <laughs> especially the men of this generation. Right. They've lost their fucking minds. <laughs> They're really going through it. They're going through They're it. They're going through it. They've lost it. They've lost it. Mm-hmm. They're weird. 
Mm-hmm. They're just it's weird. Different. What's going? I don't know what's going I don't know. on. They're going through it. Men are really going through something. But I think we're going through something too, because we're, we're we're like it's over. Like I can't. I haven't it's looked. Shifting. Something is shifting. I haven't looked at a man. I'm like, damn. Like you're the one, you know, or like I'm just like mm-hmm. I'm disappointed. Mm-hmm. I feel like you always find that feeling when you're like completely focused on yourself. Yeah. Have you ever dated like an, a really attractive male before? Yeah. But usually that's not my type. It's not your type? I like something like rough around the edges or just different. Like super attractive guys are like not my thing. Why? Um, I don't know. I think because like that's not enough for me. Like I said, it's always the person that's going to come into my life and like make my brain stronger. Yeah. So it's like those like give you ideas. Yeah, like, like you should ideas be doing ideas or like inspire me in some sort of way that like just elevates my life. Like a muse. Yeah. It's hard to find that. And like looks don't inspire me like that. Looks are horrible. Just, I actually prefer I, I don't even like pretty boys. I yeah. I said that a lot of times on the show. Yeah. They're it has to be like something way, way deeper, deeper. for me. Because it's like, oh, that guy's attractive. Could I? Sure. But do I need to? No. Right. You know, and they the, most of them don't really make good partners anyway because they're like really into themselves. Yeah, and they have so many girls, probably so many. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. Fuck. I'm also looking for a deeper connection, but I don't know where to mm-hmm. find it, and she doesn't know where to find it. So, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Mm-hmm. Do you travel a lot? Yeah. You do. Yeah. To like different countries. Um, I used to travel to different countries more, um, but I hope that it, that picks up again. But yeah. To like, to sing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have a manager do, like, now? I actually don't. Really? Mm-hmm. I have had managers and I'm like currently signed to this distribution and they like advise me not to have a manager yet because I want to find like the right person mm-hmm. when the time is right. So, so, how so do you- I mean, I, I have, I have like day to day and like people, assistants and creative directors and my photographer. Like we have, I have like a team. Yeah. And we all kind of work together, but there's no, like, one person who's, like, managing everything. It's kind of, like, me or, like, someone at my distribution label. That's kind of hard. Um, Yeah. Like, you have more hands-on, but it's, like, you have to do a lot more. I do. Like, I have to, like, write emails and stuff. And yeah. 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 Which, like, I do like, but sometimes my brain is just, like, oh, my God, that's too much. Because now I got to go to the studio and, like, be in creative mode and I'm in, like, business mode. Yeah, it's so, a lot. Yeah. But you're doing it. Mm-hmm. You're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I actually listened to your song. I liked it. Thank you. It was good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, Drake is the one who told me to be more vulnerable in my music. Really? Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, this is like dope and this is a vibe and this is cool. I think you should be more vulnerable. Like, I had created this like superhero character after I was sick because mm-hmm. um, I wanted to like inspire young girls. And I went on tour with Bieber and like his his arenas every night were filled with like young girls and I would get on stage every night and like realize like okay I'm asking you to stream my music like what am I saying on stage that like brings you something to your life that like makes your life better and so and I would get so many like DMs from those girls every night like this guy doesn't like me I want to kill myself this guy doesn't like me I'm going to change my hair this guy doesn't like me I need a nose job this guy doesn't like really oh my god like DM's like Moxie, this guy doesn't like me. Da, da, da. And and I would, I'm like, Jesus, like this is like the whole like consciousness of these like 12 to 18 year old girls and all over America and Canada. And I'm like, and I'm getting on stage asking you to stream my music. So what am I putting in the music that like is brainwashing them into feeling more powerful or more confident? And so I created this kind of world. And my last project was called 2989. And it was like all based around just like no man scares me or makes me feel unpowerful. I am just like in full carbon. That was the superhero's name, like full carbon mode. That's when I bleached my hair white because carbon had white hair. And I created all these animations and 3D, this 3D world. And like it was all this like futuristic shit. And like Drake was like, you know, this is awesome and all that. But don't forget that like you are human and you do get your heart hurt sometimes and you do have feelings sometimes. And like show that within this like strong world as well yeah so people can relate to it exactly because they're going through pain we're too. all going through pain yeah and and like we might like step out and look like a bad bitch or whatever but like there's guys that got me typing in my notes app you know what i mean mm-hmm. like this, what? and why did you you know <laughs> yeah. no matter how confident you are like somebody is going to be able to get in there and like 
make you stronger in the end. But like, so, so yeah, he was the one that told me to be more vulnerable in my music. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We love Drake. Yeah. Drake's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one day Drake will follow me. <laughs> and I'll feel special. He just might. <laughs> you never know. He, he, he did a podcast with that, uh, the white girl. Oh, yeah. Bobby. Yeah. yeah. That mm -hmm. was cute. Mm -hmm. She's cute. She blew up yeah. like super fast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Your podcast is doing great too. It's only been a few months. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're trying. Mm -hmm. My, my co-host just quit. It's okay. It's okay. People come, people go. That's true. Mm -hmm. As long as you have yourself. Exactly. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us where we can um, stream your music. As well. So it's Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, YouTube, Amazon. I, I have Tidal. Things. You do? Yeah. I don't know. This guy was dating like seven years ago. He's like, you have to support Jay-Z and da, da 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 And I just downloaded and never deleted it. <laughs> but I'm glad you're on there. Because mm -hmm. sometimes there's people that aren't on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's on all those platforms. Do you perform mm -hmm. live? Like, do you well, I perform live last weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, there's a tour in the works for the end of fall. So Dope. putting that together still. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to come to the LA one. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right. Any, we have three minutes left. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to cover? Um, Because we're going to, I have a really good uh, autistic editor uh -huh. and he makes good clips. So if you want to say anything. um, I mean, we talked about where to stream the music. Maybe we talk about like music that's coming out. Yeah. So yeah, I have, I have more music coming out all fall fall when is it in like september yeah september october november like i have more singles coming out okay follow her mm -hmm. on instagram we that's should, a good one we'll, we'll put the mm -hmm. the little thing mm -hmm. okay definitely follow me on instagram do you use other apps do you music use release. tiktok and all that i saw I you TikTok. have it but do you use it i do i do it's a lot of work it's a lot of these work. apps i go from like threads to tiktok you do the threads i liked threads in the How? beginning for the first oh. few weeks a lot and then it kind of like died down I can't. I can't. I don't get it. It's Twitter. It's. I don't even have Twitter. I love Twitter. You do? Yeah. But now Twitter's like X, and that's a little weird. I'm not sure. It's yeah, called they X shouldn't now. Have, they shouldn't have did that. Mm -hmm. Like, Twitter is like Twitter. Twitter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why would you change the name now? Nobody's going to want that. I, I don't call it X. Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't get the threads thing. I downloaded it. Now there's. I'm stuck with it. Yeah. I can't even undownload it because they said I'll delete my whole account. I know. I heard that. I don't even have my fucking password to my Instagram. My co-host does, and he just quit today. So I'm going to have to, like, figure out how to lure it out of him. Yeah. Take him to dinner. <laughs> don't pay. It's <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> I should tell him you're coming. And then when he gets there, just hit him with a... Give me my password. I'll just put a gun to his head. <laughs> Give me my fucking password or you're fucking dead. That could work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having you me. You have a very dope vibe. Hopefully, I didn't look thank like a uh, thousand pounds. They're saying we that I can stop. I can go to Mexico and get Ozempic pens for seventy dollars. But like, what is the side effects of that? I tried it already. I lost weight, but now I'm off of it. and I need it back. The side effects is you're just full. Oh. Uh, what about the long term side effects? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Look at this. I'm eating chocolate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs>